Imagine you're out on a walk and you notice all the little details in nature, the way birds build their nests, the shape of leaves, the movement of animals. You probably don't think of it this way, but nature is full of incredible engineering feats. What if I told you that a lot of the inventions we use every day, like Velcro or energy-efficient buildings, actually come from observing how nature works? That's what's called biomimicry, and it's pretty mind-blowing when you dive into it. Biomimicry basically means engineers and scientists take inspiration from nature to solve human problems. Think about this. Nature has had billions of years to perfect its designs. Animals, plants, and even microorganisms have found ways to adapt and thrive in their environments. For example, Velcro was invented by a Swiss engineer named Georges de Mestral after he noticed how burrs would stick to his dog's fur during walks in the forest. He studied those burrs under a microscope and realized they had tiny hooks that allowed them to cling onto anything they touched. He thought, hey, I can use that. And Velcro was born, something so simple but used in everything from shoes to NASA spacesuits. And it doesn't stop at Velcro. Nature has tons of these kinds of efficient designs and people are still discovering new ways to copy them. Take termites, for example. In the wild, termites build these huge mounds that stay cool inside no matter how hot it is outside, all without air conditioning. They do this by creating a system of tunnels that naturally ventilate the mound. Engineers took this idea and applied it to real buildings. One of the most famous examples is the Eastgate Center in Zimbabwe. It's a massive shopping mall and office building that uses 90% less energy for cooling compared to traditional buildings just by mimicking termite mounds. No fancy air conditioners, just clever design. Another example from the animal kingdom is the kingfisher bird. You know how trains make that loud noise when they go through tunnels at high speeds? It was a big problem for Japan's high-speed bullet trains. They were fast, but the noise was unbearable. Then engineers looked at how kingfisher birds dive into water. These birds have long, streamlined beaks that allow them to enter the water without making a splash. So the engineers reshaped the train's nose to look like a kingfisher's beak. It worked. The trains not only got quieter, but they also became faster and more energy efficient. Speaking of animals, beavers are basically nature's civil engineers. They build dams that can change entire ecosystems. By creating ponds, they provide habitats for many other species and help manage water flow. These same techniques are now being studied to figure out better ways to manage water resources in areas prone to floods or droughts. Beavers don't use blueprints or machinery, they just know instinctively how to do it, and we're trying to catch up. Plants are just as impressive as animals when it comes to engineering. Take the lotus leaf, for example. Lotus leaves have this amazing property where they repel water. It's called the lotus effect. Water just rolls right off them, taking dirt with it. That inspired the development of self-cleaning surfaces. Imagine a building that never needs to be cleaned because rainwater just washes off all the dirt. That's exactly what scientists are working on, inspired by this simple but effective plant. There's also a desert beetle that's caught a lot of attention. This beetle lives in the Namib Desert, one of the driest places on Earth. But it has figured out a way to survive by collecting water from fog. The beetle's back has tiny bumps that trap moisture, which then rolls down into its mouth. Engineers have mimicked this strategy to create materials that can capture water from the air, helping people in areas where water is scarce. It's like something out of science fiction, but it's real, and it's happening because people are paying attention to how nature solves problems. If you look closely at nature, you'll see patterns that follow mathematical principles. One example is the Fibonacci sequence, where each number is the sum of the two before it. You see this in the way leaves are arranged on a stem or how pine cones and sunflowers grow. Fractals appear in snowflakes, trees, and rivers. They're also used in telecommunication networks and transportation grids. Then there's the whole idea of sustainability, something nature does effortlessly. In nature, nothing goes to waste. Everything is part of a cycle. A dead tree becomes home for insects, which break it down into nutrients for the soil, which then helps other plants grow. It's a perfect loop. 
We're trying to adopt this idea in how we manufacture goods and manage resources. It's called the circular economy. Instead of a product being thrown away at the end of its life, it's reused, recycled or broken down into something new. It's kind of like trying to make our industrial systems as efficient as a forest. Energy is another big area where nature leads the way. Plants have been turning sunlight into energy for millions of years through photosynthesis, a process we're still trying to fully understand. Scientists are working on artificial photosynthesis to create renewable energy. Imagine a system where we can turn sunlight directly into fuel, just like plants do. That could completely change how we power our homes, cars and cities. Even robotics is getting in on the biomimicry action. Have you heard of robots designed to move like animals? There are snake-like robots that can slither into places humans can't reach, which is super useful in search and rescue missions or pipeline inspections. Insect-inspired drones are another fascinating development. They mimic the flight patterns of bees and dragonflies, which makes them perfect for tasks like pollinating crops or collecting data in difficult terrains. These bio-inspired designs make robots more adaptable and efficient, just like the creatures that inspire them. One challenge, though, is that nature's designs are often incredibly complex, and it's not always easy to replicate them exactly. For instance, spider silk is stronger than steel by weight, but scientists are still trying to figure out how to produce it on a large scale. Even though we can make synthetic versions of it, getting the same strength and flexibility is tricky. Another problem is that nature works on small scales, and scaling things up for human use is tough. Something that works perfectly for a beetle or a plant may need a lot of tweaking to work in a factory or a city. But the future is bright when it comes to engineering inspired by nature. New materials are being developed that break down naturally, reducing waste and pollution. Imagine a world where all our plastic waste biodegrades instead of sitting in landfills for centuries. There's also promising work on artificial leaves that can mimic photosynthesis to produce clean energy. Scientists at the University of Cambridge, for example, are working on an artificial leaf that uses sunlight to turn carbon dioxide and water into fuel. It's like creating a mini power plant out of something as simple as a leaf. Nature isn't just something to admire from afar, it's something we can learn from. By studying how nature solves problems, we can design more energy-efficient buildings, create stronger materials, or develop new ways to manage resources. Nature has been doing this for billions of years, and we're just starting to catch up. The more we observe and learn from it, the better our chances of creating a, a sustainable future. It's not just about copying nature, it's about understanding the principles behind these designs and applying them in ways that benefit both us and the planet.